the Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We begin to read in verse 14 here this morning. Here we are, 2011. Amen. Amen. You know, they say when you get older, time goes faster and faster. I wonder if it's that that's the case or whether it's just getting faster forever. I wonder that. But here we are, 2011. Did you know you would make it to 2011? Huh. I wondered myself. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called he called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and, and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he, he who had received one went and dug, dug it into the ground and hid it, hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents. Besides them, his Lord said to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of, of your Lord. And, and he who had received the two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then, then, he who had, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you do not, where you have not sown, and gather where you have, <clears throat> have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, that... <clears throat> Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming I would have re received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and to him who and he and he will have an abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast this unprofitable servant in the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we see this is the, the story Jesus gives of the talents. And this really in my opinion, is a sobering message really to all of us here this morning yes. that God has given us talents and God expects us to be stewards of those talents that we, we have. Yes. Amen? Amen? You know, sometimes we think, well, we just don't really have talents. So-and-so has talents. But the reality is every one of us in this place has been given something from God. Amen? Amen. You know, even the fact that we can breathe, even the fact that we have life yeah. is a gift from God. Amen? Yes. Yeah. These, ver these verses challenge us really with a question of 
And this is the question that I would pose to you here this morning. Are you investing your life for eternity? Are you looking at just the things that are around us here in this world? Or you're, are you investing your life for eternity? For all eternity? Because the things that we do for God last. Amen? Amen. They will last forever. But yet the things that we do within ourselves, those things will just be burned up. Those things are, would just be wasted. Amen? So are we investing in, in our life for eternity? Are we investing for heaven? Are we wasting our life in meaning, meaningless living? Remember the prodigal son who took his inheritance and wasted it in riotous living. That's really even a type of we taking our talent and all that God has given us and just wasting it for nothing. Amen? Amen. You know, think of all the talented people in the world and if they would use that for God's glory. Yes. But oftentimes it's wasted for their own lofty gain and for their own worldly pleasure. Matthew 6, 19 says this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure where? In heaven. Lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen? You know, this year more than ever, we need to be mindful that we have things that God has entrusted us with. Amen? There's things, there's five things I want us to really see this morning that we need to wake up to the facts in our life. Amen? This year more than ever, we need to see and understand what the Lord has given us, amen? amen? This year more than ever, number one, we need we need to realize that we're living in the last days, amen? amen? We need to not just think it, we need to not just mental, mentally understand it, but we really need to have a, an understanding in our hearts where it permeates our whole life, where we realize that we know that we know that we know that we're living in these last days and we need to be awake every moment of every day and live in that way. Amen? Amen. Not all about you, but whenever I look around and see what's taking place around, it, it makes it a little easier to realize I'm living in the last days. Amen? Just look around at our world we see the signs of His coming. Amen? Yes. Jesus said it would be like birth pains. Yes. It would be nation would rise against nation. There would be rumors and rumors of wars and pestilence, yes. famines, earthquakes in various places. I don't know about you, but whenever I read about 5,000 birds flat dropping out of the sky, right. it, it kind of makes me think, hmm, what's yeah. up with that? Exactly. And then we need to realize there's several more besides that in several other states. It's like, what is going on? And then when you add to the fact that 97% that of the bumblebee population is almost gone. And the honeybee population is almost cut in half. And I think something like 11 or several thousand tons of fish has just ended up dead. You think, what in the world is going on? It's like birth pains. Amen? All of these things that are beginning to take place. You know, then some of those things are reported on the news, but there's other things that, that we realize that are disappearing even more than those things. There's bats. There's, there's snake populations that are decreasing. <clears throat> You know, whatever the debate of whatever the cause it is, 
One thing we know is that the Lord is right at the door. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. You know, whenever we begin to see the signs of the times, it's one thing to see them, but what we have to watch out for is begin to see them start to take place close together and even at once. We see truly that we're living in the last days. Amen? Amen. Right at the door. And so, in light of this this teaching that Jesus gave on the, on the talents, we need to be sober in the way we live. If we're living in the last days, then we need to take that which God has given us and use it to the full capacity. Amen? Yes, amen. amen. See, this year more than ever, we need to live this year like there's not going to be another year. Yes. We need to live this year as if there's not going to be a 2012. That this is going to be the last year that we live. Now, that should challenge us, amen? And see, I don't know about you, but that's, that's what God has been stirring up in my heart. But I would have to confess it. I'm still trying to get it down into my heart. Yes. Trying to get it down into my life and not just in my head. Where I fully understand and fully living as if this is the last year that I may live. We need to live this year as a year of anticipation. Anticipating the coming of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We, need to, we need to anticipate the return of Christ. Now, the thing we need to do is we need to live this year as a year of preparation. Amen? Yes. To prepare our hearts and to make sure we're ready for His return. Yes. We need to prepare for all that He has for us, yes. even for this year. You know, something that's that's been on my heart every time, especially every year whenever we pray is what I feel like I get from the Lord is really an emphasis that we need to place on reaching children in our area. In this community. That we need to focus on youth and children in our church, in this ministry. But those things take preparation. Amen? Amen? Just look upstairs. They take preparation. Yes. And I would encourage us all together as the body of Christ to receive that and to, and to say this year we're going to prepare so we can reach out Amen. to those that are around us. Amen? Amen. As if this was our last year to reach. As if their soul depends on us reaching out to them this year. Amen? Amen. As if we're the only ones that may be the ones that can reach them. That's how we ought to live. Amen? Amen. God has uniquely given us talents and gifts, and He has uniquely placed us in this place, in this neighborhood, at this time. Amen? Yes. yes. And God wants us to be used to reach those that are around us. This place. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, if anybody ever comes out here during 3 o'clock, you see that this place is just a madhouse out here. Right. Of cars and kids and, and so forth. And it's just, it's amazing that we're just right here. Yeah. And we can have such an ability where God can use us to reach them. Amen? But it takes preparation. You know, I think any parent, if they brought their kids upstairs and saw what we had upstairs, they'd be like, I don't know if I want to bring my kid here. That's just right. a logical parent mind. Amen? Yes. 